We have uh, meteorites back here. I don't think there's any point in bringing them out. I'll show them to you. These are from the uh, American Museum of Natural History. That's... <laughs> You know, scientists tell us, by the way, that's the noise they make in space, these things. So, Here, let's do it together. Here we have the Canyon Diablo meteorite. Here we have my favorite, the Munjindi, the 16-pound Munjindi. And over here we have the Henbury. This thing weighs 88 pounds. And these things uh, fall from deep space and uh, come to Earth. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, and that's the sound they make. So if you ever hear this... Say you're at home some afternoon watching cartoons in your house and you hear this sound, then you know that you've got a meteorite in your front yard and, and you damn well better call the authorities. Remember, once again, listen for this telltale sound. There you go, that's, that's a meteorite. It probably just bounced off the hood of your car and it's in the driveway. Go out and pick it up. What are we doing? I don't have anything. Oh. Every now and then, ladies and gentlemen, we just like to turn this thing over to our studio audience. It's a segment we call Who Asked For It? And uh, we try and satisfy the whims, the desires, the interests of our studio audience. We have uh, a handsome young woman standing right there this evening. Nice to have you with us, ma'am. What is your name, please? Lois Bitterman. Lois Bitterman. Where are you from, Lois? Duluth, Minnesota. I'm sorry? Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, that's iron ore country, isn't it? Taconite? Yeah. yeah. What do you do for a living up there in Duluth? I teach interpretive dance. Uh-huh. And uh, are you married? Do you have a family? Yes. Uh -huh. Hobbies? Uh, well, no, really. I spend so much time dancing, I really don't have any time for hobbies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Can... Uh, well, will security come and get this imposter out of here? Um, but seriously, Lois, is there something we can do for you tonight? Yeah, well, I'd like to wish happy birthday to someone who's having a birthday today. Okay, happy birthday. Go right ahead. We'll be happy to accommodate you there. Is anyone having a birthday today? <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. All right, thank you very much, Lois. It's Lois Bitterman. <laughs> Lois Bitterman. The woman is so busy, she has no hobbies, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Duluth. Yes, sir, what is your name, please? Uh, Phil Bradshaw. Phil, and uh, where are you from, sir? New York. Uh -huh. You have hobbies, I'm guessing? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> of course you do. And uh, what is your line of work, Phil? Uh, I own my own small business. You're, oh, self-employed, have your own business. What can I do for you tonight on uh, Who Asked For It? Well, I'm a big fan. I was just wondering, could I get an autograph? Well, you know, uh, usually in the middle of the show, we don't take time for this, but since it is Who Asked For It, come on down. Phil uh, looks like a very nice guy. We'll... Sure. You have a pen here? Okay, great. And do uh, you have something for me to sign? Yeah. I'll just sign here. All right. Okay. And here. Okay. Okay. And just initial it here and here. Just initials? Okay. All right. There you are, That's Phil. Right. Nice okay. meeting you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. It's Phil, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, listen for this telltale sound, ladies and gentlemen, and you could win big money turning in your meteorite. There you go. Uh, yes, sir, what is your name, please? Uh, Charlie Rubin. Charlie, welcome to the show. Welcome to Who Asked For It, the segment of our program where we turn it over to you, the audience. Anything you want, anything we can help you with, go right ahead. What can we do for you tonight? Well, uh, my problem's pretty big, Dave. Uh, I don't know if you can really help me. I'm profoundly depressed. Uh -huh. uh, life for me is just an endless black tunnel without any light. Uh -huh. Uh, I'd like to care about something, but I, I just can't. Yeah. Every day, I just sink deeper and deeper into just hopeless despair. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of sharing those feelings tonight. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm glad you're here tonight. What was your name? Charlie Rubin. Charlie. I, okay, Charlie. Because, uh, you know, I want you to know something. I care about you, Charlie. I care very much about you. I care about each and every one of our home viewers and our studio audience members. And I want you, Charlie, to take a look at this film. It's called A Happier You. Now, this film has been produced by the Mental Health Division of General Electric in cooperation with the National Council of Churches. Watch this, Charlie. I think it could be just the Before every meal and after you go to the toilet, you can wash away germs which might make you sick. Being clean gives you a sense of well-being. You actually feel better, more alive, when you know you are clean all over. A friendly smile, which shows sparkling teeth and healthy gums. 
shining hair brushed or combed neatly in place. Skin that is scrubbed looking and has a healthy glow. Those are the things which add up to you in the other fellow's eyes. Is your cleanliness giving the picture you want it to give? Okay, there you are, Charlie. I, I certainly hope that was some uh, help for you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you for dropping by. <laughs> Well, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure he'll, well, there you go. I think, I think another meteorite landed. Uh... Yes, sir, what is your name, please, and how may I help you, my uh, friend? My name is Glenn Eichler. Glenn, nice to have you here. Where are you from, Glenn? I'm from New York. Uh-huh, what do you do for a living in town? Uh, I'm managing editor of a travel magazine. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> All right, Glenn, what can I do for you tonight? Well, I thought there was a rule against having animals in the studio. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose technically you could say that we do have a rule. What, are you talking about the little puppy up there? Now, you're not going to make us throw the little puppy out, are you? Well, I really don't care about the puppy. I'm talking about the horse in the control room. <laughs> a horse in the control room? Well, have you ever heard anything that stupid? <laughs> it's ridiculous, Sam. Oh, jeez. Hal, Hal, did you hear that? The guy thinks we have a horse in the control room. Take <laughs> horse. One horse, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Hal. Thank you, thank you very okay. much. And yeah. wow. Got an actual horse. What is it? Yeah, that's it, Hal. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're just kind of collecting ourselves out here. Yeah. Oh, I see we have another gentleman. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to ignore you or overlook you, but you look like you're accustomed to that sort of treatment. I'm sorry. What, uh, what, uh, what is your name, please? Uh, Steve Burnett. Uh-huh. Steve, have you, have you ever been hotter in your entire life? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> what can I do for you, Steve? Um, I'm having a little trouble understanding the metric system. Oh, yeah. And uh, could, you, could you tell me the difference between uh, 100 degrees centigrade and 100 degrees Fahrenheit? Oh, now, this is an excellent question. Paul and I were having this discussion a couple of days ago. You know, <laughs> the United States, uh, I guess we're still trying to convert to the metric system, and people still aren't clear about this sort of thing. So we have uh, one of our staff members out here tonight to explain to you the difference between 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're familiar with, and 100 degrees centigrade. Here's our own Chris Elliott. Chris, thanks for dropping yeah. by to help us out. Thanks. It's really actually quite simple. 100 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty much body temperature. It's not bad. 100 degrees centigrade is a little bit hotter. It's closer to boiling, I'd say. Oh, yeah, that's quite a bit hotter. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... That's very hot. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. Chris. And, and thanks to you, sir, for uh, asking that question. Well, we're going to pause here. We'll be right back. Tom Selleck is here. He'll be out in a couple of minutes. Come on back, folks.